Greetings, Africa! Oh Lord! Welcome to another episode of the Pan African Express. Did you guys miss me? Because I missed you. I am your host, Mbali, and as usual, I give you everything that is happening in this beautiful continent of ours. Before we even go there, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click on the notification button so you don't miss any episodes. If you can do that for me, I will love you for the rest of my life. Let's get to it, shall we? Fighting has been going on since Wednesday morning between Meletia men and federal forces in the Ethiopian holy city of Lalibela. Located in the conflict red and Amhara region and famous for its rock-hewn churches. This is according to several residents. The Amhara Fano self-defense militias supported the Ethiopian army during the two-year conflict between it and the rebel authorities of the neighboring region of Tigray, which ended with an agreement signed in November 2022 in Pretoria. This agreement, seen as a reversal of alliance, excavated tensions in Amhara, which degenerated into open conflict when the federal government tried in April to disarm regional forces. The families of the victims of the 2018 dam disaster in Kenya have reached an out-of-court settlement with the owner of the facility. In an agreement mediated by Kenya's Human Rights Commission, the owner agreed to pay 1.2 million shillings for adults and 800,000 Kenyan shillings for minors lost in the tragedy. This was sent by the commission in a statement this past Tuesday. The incident occurred in 2018 when the dam collapsed after heavy rains and water flooded through the fields of a 3,000 acre commercial coffee farm, sweeping away homes and crop farm downstream. At least 47 people, including 20 children, were killed. This is according to the Kenya Human Rights Commission. Thousands were displaced from their homes as the dam water swept through neighboring villages. Cambridge early years will form the first stage in the Cambridge Pathway, a high quality and joined a path for educational success for children aged 3 to 19. Multiple studies confirm that education during the early years is very crucial. Research from the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development's International Early Learning and Child Well-Being Study shows that among other benefits are high-quality early childhood education and care, also known as ECEC, compared to an average one can double the growth in children's verbal comprehension. Ah, you see, if I was part of a cooking show, Ooh, I would make the best dishes ever. But anyway, this is not about me. This is about a Nigerian chef, Hilda Iflong Basi, known as Hilda Basi, has been officially dethroned from her position as the Guinea, Guinness World Record holder for the longest cooking marathon. Guinness World Record confirmed a tweet in a statement on its official website, which was later posted on X. The tweet announced that Ale, Alan Fisher as the new record holder. The island owner and chef of a restaurant in Japan has broken two cooking related Guinea World, Guinness World Records titles. Wow. Nigerian cooking queen Hilda Basi has been dethroned. Alan Fisher from Ireland cooked for an incredible, not one, not two, but look at it. Guess what? 119 hours and 57 minutes at his restaurant in Japan. Hilda was in June declared the Guinness World Record holder for the longest cooking marathon. The 26-year-old Nigerian chef began on Thursday, May 11th and continued through Monday, May 15th. Cooking over one, mm -mm, 16, but 100 pots of food during her four-day kitchen stunt. Wow, that is really, really, whew, that was very intense. A hundred pots of food. Oh, I could finish the whole pot. But anyway, that is it from me, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have been indoctrinated by all the African news. See you, legends, on the next one.